Here's Alex. He's a five-year-old boy who has undiagnosed attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, more commonly referred to as ADHD. ADHD is one of the most common childhood disorders, more predominantly diagnosed in boys, usually appearing early in life between ages three and six. Hallmark symptoms of ADHD include being easily distracted, difficulty focusing, boredom with a task after a few minutes, difficulty with organization and completing a task, Difficulty with learning a new task. Difficulty with listening and following instructions. Daydreaming. Alex, can you solve this for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, Alex, can you solve It is clear that Alex has no interest in learning and is unable to pay attention to his tutor. It is being brought to full attention to both Alex's school teacher and tutor that Alex has difficulty in paying attention. So, Alex's mom decides to visit the family physician to inquire about the possibility of ADHD. No single test can diagnose the child as having ADHD. Instead, a licensed health professional needs to gather information about the child and his or her behavior and environment to then assess the child themselves. Many will refer the family to a health specialist with experience in ADHD. So doctor, are you sure my little Alex is going to be okay? Well, from what you've told me, little Alex here appears to be easily distracted, has trouble focusing, doesn't listen, often seems to daydream, doesn't follow instructions, and often doesn't complete his homework. Wow, that sounds very familiar. I had a parent-teacher interview last week, and that's exactly what his teacher told me. He doesn't pay attention in class, he distracts the other students, he doesn't nap during nap time, he never seems to complete any sort of homework. Hmm. Well, it sounds to me like a classic case of ADHD. ADHD! Or attention deficit hyperactive disorder. I'm going to write you a referral to a specialist, and he'll tell you for certain whether you have ADHD or not. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. Not a problem. The cause of ADHD is unclear, but many studies suggest that a combination of factors contribute to it. But before fully diagnosing ADHD, other possibilities for the symptoms will have to be ruled out by the family physician and ADHD specialist. Other possible causes for the symptoms of ADHD include undetected seizures, middle ear infection causing hearing problems, medical problems affecting thinking and behavior, learning disabilities, anxiety, depression, or other psychiatric problems. Significant and sudden change. Well, your doctor was right to send you here to the ADHD Institute. Seems a little here doesn't need to have ADHD. So, what exactly is ADHD? Well, ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, is a reasonably common disorder affecting between 6 to 7% of children. Uh, usually not persisting in adulthood, but occasionally can. Uh, it has both genetic and environmental components. The exact causes are unknown, but uh, both have been implicated in the cause of ADHD. So is it mainly genetic? 
we can't say for certain, but there does appear to be a definite genetic component. Should I con be concerned that I have ADHD? Uh, yes, you should. In fact, recent studies have demonstrated that uh, mothers often go undiagnosed and can exacerbate problems in their uh, offspring having ADHD. Drinking and smoking during pregnancy can also be a source of ADHD, as we reported. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? No. So some other kids in Alex's class have been taking prescribed medication. Do you recommend that? Well, medications have been proven effective. There's many possible options, including well-known names that you might know, such as uh, Adderall and Ritalin. Uh, these medications are typically stimulants and uh, work by stimulating the areas in the brain that affect attention, most of all. Uh, so how will that affect Alex? Well, if all goes well, uh, that's not the way for doctors. But uh, with any luck, little Alex will gain a higher level of attention. Although medication should make it easier for uh, little Alex here to concentrate in class and focus more on the studies. Okay, so he'll be more focused on his work then. Well, taking the medication should help your son here, but uh, unfortunately, it only affects the symptoms and not so much the cause. Uh, as soon as the little Alex here stops taking the medication, he'll be right back and bouncing around again. Uh, so he'll need to take the, red the medication for the rest of his life? Not necessarily. He should grow out of it. So the main type of drugs for ADHD are stimulants, such as Adderall and Ritalin. And these work by activating centers in the brain that will increase concentration. So as you'll see here, they will um, activate the locus aurelius, nucleus accumbens, and ventral tegmental area. Looking at the cellular level of the brain, these areas of the brain are activated through structures called a chemical synapse with the use of neurotransmitters, which in this case are dopamine and norepinephrine. So how the system works is that dopamine and norepinephrine are produced from the presynaptic neuron and they come down into the synapse and they will activate um, the, the receptors in the postsynaptic neuron to, to send off a signal. And how these uh, neurotransmitters are cleaned up is that some of them will go back into, um, into the presynaptic neuron by a reuptake enzyme. Okay. And so the Adderall works by um, blocking this reuptake thereby increasing the concentration of the dopamine and norepinephrine and all, um, all the neurotransmitters, and thereby increasing the activation of the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Under medical supervision, stimulant medications are considered safe. Stimulants do not make children with ADHD feel high, although some kids report feeling slightly different or funny. Current medications do not cure ADHD, rather they control the symptoms for as long as they are taken. Medications can help a child pay attention and complete schoolwork. It is not clear, however, whether medications can help children learn better. Adding behavioral therapy, counseling, and practical support may help children with ADHD and their families to better cope with everyday problems. Alex now takes his medication, Adderall, following the guidelines of the healthcare specialist. Now Alex's tutor has become more comfortable with his condition and has been following guidelines suggested by an ADHD help center that may improve Alex's concentration during lessons. Alex now meets with his tutor three times a week, always at the same time, to ensure that he's prepared for his lessons. She often gives him praise when he obeys the rules and listens to instructions. She also ensures that his notebooks are organized and his subjects are separated with dividers. Alex's mom has also followed these guidelines at home. She's organized his room according to his activities she has separate bins containing his belongings for his lessons, his soccer practices, and his toys. Transitioning to a new life with ADHD may also seem frightening at first. If someone you know is currently displaying ADHD symptoms or is being recently diagnosed, there are many resources available to make this transition as smooth as possible. Additional support can often be found simply by talking to your child's teacher and making alternative arrangements. Other support resources can be found in the following links. You are not alone. For more support, give us a call at 1-866-257-ADHD.